last vlog or my last video got cut off and that was really obnoxious but I know where I left off I was talking about the the problem with crying on the internet and specifically the one video that so many people meet me through on YouTube is my existential crisis in India it has like 44,000 views or something last I checked which is like crazy but what I what I hate about this video is like it's so misunderstood it's because there's so much context that's missing like I was going through a really really tough breakup with my boyfriend Ben at the time who from from the foundry 24 days who like I'm still getting over which is a whole other story um, but the problem with crying on the internet is that people think it's still happening and they, they'll like reach out to me as if like I'm still dealing with that like emotion but it's so far removed like for example like these videos like I'm still um, like I'm still catching up with videos from two months ago so I just recently posted the video from when I was in St. Thomas from when I first left and people are and like people are just reacting like oh you're like well you know they're reacting to it as if, as if that moment is happening for me now and I was like no actually like I'm that's a whole other moment in my life that's not real for me now so I think that's one thing that's important to consider when watching YouTube's on, videos on YouTube it's like the context of when that person posted that is not necessarily their current context, you know? And I think it's really, and I've talked about this before, that I think that in order to really understand a person, like, you have to understand their context, you know? Um, like, yeah, so even, for example, like, my, my last videos that I made when I was in India, like, there's a lot of context you do not understand. And if you understood that context, which you never will, or maybe if you read my book one day, then, like, you would understand, like, why I made some more, like, negative comments than I would, like, now while I'm... I have a different context. Oh yeah, so what is my context now? So, so I returned from India, I've been here, back in Boston for maybe two, how long have I been here? Like, almost two months? Yeah. A month and a half? Almost two months. And, um, so this is Morgan's apartment. Morgan is my old studio partner, if you remember from my first vlogs, I shared a studio with Morgan LaForge, who's awesome. So since I came back from India, she let me crash at her place here. And so I've been staying here with the lovely Flora. Hi, lovely Flora. In this, like, super cute apartment. That's a great thing about Morgan is she has this incredible design sense. So Morgan's actually moving out in May, which is at the end of this month. And so I'm moving in. And so Flora is taking Morgan's old room where I stay. And I'm going to take Flora's room. And so we are going to be officially roommates, which I'm really happy about because Flora is awesome. She's just, like, a happy, beautiful woman who just, like, Makes me feel so good, and I'm really lucky, so lucky to share space with her. Job. I mean it, though. I feel um, the same about Erica. She's the yay. best. That's so cool. Anyways, um, so the point: nostalgia. Two years ago, I was moving out of found. I was moving out of the desk where it all started in Foundry 24. Without that incubator space, I would not be where I am today. I would not be in business for myself. I don't think so, because um, I learned so much that experience, and I'm definitely nostalgic for the journey. And grateful for where I am and excited to be where I am because the, stu the new studio where I am is awesome. It's so great. And my whole journey in India like set me up to be there and set me up with all these new lessons that I learned to really, I think, make the most of it. So I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm definitely still dealing with my own, with like, with shit. I mean, it's, a, I think becoming happy and healthy is like a lifelong like learning process, right? You don't just like get it right. I think it's not about pro uh, perfection, it's about progress. And I think through all my travels and everything that's happened, I've definitely made a lot of progress. So, yeah. I'm learning to slow down. I think that's one of, I think that's one of the biggest things that Mustafa taught me is really just like learning to slow down. One thing he always said to me is, I, Erica, you jump your energy too much. And at first I was like, what does that mean? But now I understand. I'm always like, especially if you watch a lot of my older videos, I'm like, this and this and this, and jumping and jumping and on, and everything's so like fast, and I'm talking fast, and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> now I'm definitely a lot slower, and I think that's good. Because going slower, it goes hand in hand with like patience, and patience is one of the most important variables to success, I think. So, anyways. Here, I'll show you Morgan's room really quick because personally, I just want to document it for my own sake because these are really, actually, no, I'm a little messy right now, but I'll just show you some stuff on the walls, the plants. You know, that's the thing about these um, video blogs that I realized, like looking back at one from two years ago, 
more than any, not more than anything, but a lot of this is just like a journal for me to remember where I've been and to see how much I've grown and what I've learned in my process. So it's a lot for like you guys to share the journey that I'm taking with you to hopefully to give you some strength or insight or, or something valuable for your journey, but also like for myself to, to remember and to be grateful and to have awareness and perspective because I think that's the most important thing in life. And that's what I think my journey into India was really valuable for. It gave me a lot of perspective. Anyways, over and out from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Say bye, Flora. Bye. Yay, she's so lovely. Mwah.